Having a little family history time here with uh, Dylan's <coughs> grandma happens to be here. And so there's quite a history with her husband, Russ's father, Glenn. Yes. And there's a great story about Jean's mom. And this all happened in Colorado. And in the year 1959, we heard Lori tell a story. So I wanted her to tell it again. And I met her ex-husband who wanted to marry her again after it was all over. I don't know what year that was, probably in the year 1995. And when we went to his house, he pretty much said, if that woman goes to heaven, I'm gonna go to hell. And then he got over his bitterness. He asked the Lord to forgive him for his sins. And he was very loving and kind in the end of his life and wanted to marry his ex-wife again. <laughs> so it's a great story. Anyway, Lori told a really funny story about Jean's mother and the history of, of Russ's father that we hadn't quite known, who was a pilot in Colorado when Jean was nine years old. So Lori's gonna tell us that little story of maybe you can start out with the first things you knew about Jean or Glenn did. Start there, okay? Well, I was 12. Oh, you were 12? Yeah, he was 12. Okay. Uh, and you, did you go flying with Glenn, or he just yeah, told he, you these we stories went, about we, these Sullivans? We just had gone out to Steamboat Springs, and uh, just just for the, the evening, you know. And we went to this bar, and I, I can't even remember the name of it now. The Anchor, or the... No. The... the uh, yeah, the Anchor Bar. And no. had you grown up knowing about Pat your whole life? or No, uh -uh. Okay. I, only, I only met her uh, that night. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> In the bar. In the bar. <laughs> it was the first time you saw Jean's mother. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> In live action. So tell us that story all well, over I, again. I met her, I think, when we flew into the airport. Two but I, I didn't times. really know her uh -huh. yeah. until that night. Yeah. And she... Lamb, she reached back and she hauled off and hit that center <laughs> and let it into just like a man would. I mean, she <laughs> so Jean's mom was small and kind of thin, oh, she and was. Uh, she taught Jean how to be a heavyweight boxing champion. She was. You want to add to she was story? about five seven, but uh, she was. Pretty. They were having dinner in this lounge <laughs> and restaurant, and uh, sitting in a booth. Yeah, no, yeah. and the competition out of Craig, but they were in Steamboat. Uh, this this senator congressman was a friend of the competition that, the, the, the spray company that competed against oh. Mile High Aviation, uh -huh. my mom and Betty. Well, they didn't like Betty, really didn't know my mom, but uh, they, you know, this, Congressman or senator was at the bar with a bunch of his buddies, and and uh, <clears throat> they saw Mom and Betty sitting there, and so he went over to their booth and basically threatened her. Said, uh, "It's a good thing you know you're not outside. I'd probably yeah. take you out or something like that." My mom said, "You lay a hand on her." And she says, "You and I are going." And so she she gets up, goes to the ladies' room. Betty, of course, not to be outdone by anybody, gets up in this guy's face, and this guy hit her, knocked her down. Go figure, right? Did you watch all that go on? In a, in a, in a bar. And, and wow. all kinds of, mostly men, cowboys, whatever. Cowboys. Nobody, nobody did anything, right? So Betty sits down and starts finishing her dinner. Mom comes out of the restroom, sits down, looks at Betty's lip. By this time, her lips like yeah. swollen up. She said, Clark, what happened? That guy hit you? She said, Pat, forget it. Because Betty knew. My mom says, I'll be right back. So she gets up, walks over to the guy, says, hey. And the guy wore glasses. He was 6'2". He was a big guy. He wore glasses. And he was fat. Of course, my mom, <laughs> she's markets of Queensbury rules, right? So she says, get up, take your glasses off. I told you, 
if you mess with Betty, you and I are gonna go. We'll get up, take your glasses off, we're gonna go. So he stands up and acts like he's gonna take his glasses off and hits her. Oh my God! Hits my mom. <clears throat> well, he didn't do very good because she started hitting this guy, backed him up against concrete or the brick wall, split his head wide open, put him down on the ground, they called the ambulance, they hauled him away. So now you you just read it in the newspaper, so we want to hear from the eyewitness again. <laughs> I okay. watched it happen. <laughs> I, and, and you tell us your version now of watching this happen. Well, he, he pretty much says it all. <laughs> <laughs> you probably couldn't and believe it, what you I were seeing. I was sitting there with my mouth wide open. And, and, and your husband's was... trying to get you to leave, right? <laughs> yeah, and Glenn was saying, <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. And I said, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I got to see the end of the story. So the floor show. Yeah. tell us what this little boxing woman did in your life to well, uh, create a boxer out of you. Just got to end the story well here. Well, we'll end the story this For way. For the so, people in Rifle. That, so, they, so they come back to Rifle the next day. And uh, they're walking in to the ready room, which was where the pilots hung out. That was our, our living room. So Mark and I go out on the porch to help haul our stuff in. <clears throat> They're standing together. Betty's got a huge black and blue swollen lip. Mom's got a black and blue swollen chin. We looked at them, we looked at each other. We started to laugh and mom says, it ain't what you think. <laughs> she says, we didn't get in a fight. She said, uh, it was a third party. And so they told us the story. But uh, the third party that had a lot of pit political influence yeah. that ended up on a front yeah. page. So your mother, the boxer <laughs> that, owned, that owned the airport with Betty, tell us how yeah, you, well, what happened down the road in your boxing career. This is for the rifle page. I used to page. go to Denver a couple times a year <clears throat> and drink with an ex-prize fighter who owned a, a, a motel and a bar in Littleton. I forget the name of the guy. You'd probably, some people might remember who he was, but he was an ex-boxer. Well, one day, this guy shows up at the airport, and so they're sitting in the front room drinking. They always drink. And uh, so he says, so uh, mom and Betty have us come in, introduce us to this guy. He's a big guy. He's an ex-pug. So he's got a flat nose, and he, he kind of talks like Wallace Berry. And Pug is boxer. I had to look that word up. Pug and, uh, is boxer. Yeah. And uh, so we introduce, he, he introduces himself. He turns to my mom and he says, so which one is the kid? <clears throat> like she had already arranged for him to come over and start giving me some lessons, boxing <laughs> lessons. She says, oh, it's him. Okay, kid. Hang around, we'll go outside and we'll get started. I didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> so we end up going outside, no gloves, no nothing. He says, okay, put him up. So I put him up and he hit me. <laughs> he said, do you know how come you got hit? <laughs> I said, yeah, because you hit me. He says, no, you didn't hold your hands right. He said, put him up like this. And he said, and now he says, you ready? I said, yeah, he hit me again. So. That's how I learned. That was the beginning of my boxing instruction. <laughs> Which uh, you were going to go into the ring with the heavyweights. Well, anyway, yeah, uh, that's later. Yeah, th that's, that's a great uh, story. Yeah. What I thought was really interesting when I read on the Stanford history is that Ernie Nevers was offered close to a, a half a million dollars because, you know, and again, he pitched to Babe Ruth. He invented yeah. the hook shot. He was an NFL star. They offered to pay him a half a million dollars in the tw late 20s wow. to to train as a boxer. He'd kind of been beat up too much in football though, so he decided to uh, bail out of that even though it was big money. Anyway, yeah. end of story. Yeah, this is for the rifle.